What up my nerds, I'm the roleplay gamer and I like to party. This is not a review of Deluvion. Deluvion is, uh, it's a little bit odd to define, it's kind of an exploration game with open world elements but it's not an open world game. It has Metroidvania aspects, I believe. I could be getting that term wrong. Someone will let me know in the comments. Uh, and it's it's a, a submarine combat game. It's it's kind of cool. Imagine a much more linear version of Rebel Galaxy. It's with with no procedural elements. It's it's pretty cool. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so let's get like the technical and disclaimer stuff out of the way first. I did receive uh, a copy of the game for free from the developers for the purpose of critique, for the purpose of making a video just like this. Uh, rest assured, it does not color my opinion one way or the other. Also, before I forget, because I do tend to forget, the video is in 21 by 9 That's why it looks weird. It's an ultra wide. So the game does seem to fully support ultra wide, which is. Fan fantastic! I love it. Nothing is stretched. Nothing is displaced. Uh, everything works perfectly. So unfortunately, the game sort of resists recording. It's one of those games that won't let you like hook into it uh, with OBS. So I'm having to do uh, display capture, which is why you're seeing FPS in the top left there. Um, it might not be big enough, but. <laughs> Hopefully it's big enough and at least you can see what kind of FPS we're getting throughout the game. It usually runs at a reasonably solid, solid 60 for me. Uh, the It's not like too graphically int intensive. It's not super high fidelity, but what they have done with, you know, the textures and the assets that they, they have here is, in my opinion, really fantastic. The general art direction is beautiful and it, it's a very... It, it's a it's a beautiful and creepy game, right? In some ways, not scary, just a little bit creepy, especially if you're susceptible to the concept of, you know, deep, dark water and uh, sea monsters and shit like that, you know, which I am. <laughs> it's really cool. And, there's, and because of the uh, very limited view range, which I'm sure helps uh, with the performance as well, but because of the very limited view range, you also get these moments where you see nothing and then suddenly just, just comes out at you. Whatever it is, it just comes out at you and it's like, oh shit, that is freaky. Okay, so it's got this sort of cross-section 2D aspect as well. While I'm not a huge fan of the particular art style they've used here, I have nothing against the fact that it's 2D, um, I, I love this whole concept and the, the how smooth and seamless the transition is between 3D and 2D here. So this is like how they handle... Um, like uh, buying and selling and, and the quest talking to, to people and whatnot, advancing the story and such. I say quest like it's an open world game. This is probably something I'm going to say a, a few times throughout the video. It's not... Uh, look, un unless uh, later on in the game it gets a lot, you know, more open, uh, at least this first area is... It feels open world in sections, but it's not. It's just a it's a it's a big linear experience with uh, exploration gameplay thrown in there, and that's fine as long as you know that that's what you're getting, and you're not looking at this and going, "Hey, that's an open world game." You get there and you realize it's not an open world game, and you get upset. You know, just just be aware that that's what you're getting. It is a linear experience, as far as I can tell. Now, well, all right, let's let's get <laughs> all right. There's there's supposedly three areas. I just overdrive when I meant to slow down. What a goob. Oh, okay. So you can wag into things. That's, 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 I did that on purpose to show you for the critique. <laughs> okay, so I believe it's according to the Steam page. Uh, there are three large areas uh, that exist in this game that you explore and you play in and whatnot. This is just the first area. This is area number one. I've, I've played about eight hours and then hit this difficulty spike that is just egregious and absurd. And I'll talk about that more later towards the end of the video. I like to keep the negatives uh, towards the end. So that is why I actually went into this, like two hours in, I decided I'm having so much fun. I'm going to play through to the end and do maybe even do a fully fledged review, which is something I haven't done for years, right? Uh, usually with these videos, I haven't, either haven't got the time or the inclination to, to play through to the end, uh, which is why I'm, I do this. This is not a review format, which is uh, first impressions. Okay, so I had intended to play through the end. Then I hit this difficulty spike, which I'll tell you more about in uh, you know later on. 
and it stopped me from progressing. So keep that in mind, right? I, I really, really want to see the rest of the game, but I can't. <laughs> Okay, so what do you actually do? Well, you got this big area. I'll show you the map. You got this this whole area here to uh, sail around and you explore. You gotta you've got to find new um, settlements, I guess. Find new landmarks, which is what these things are. Uh, you've got to salvage ships and uh, like research stations, workshops, uh, just abandoned structures and whatnot. You got to salvage them for. Uh, materials so that you can survive and it's there's very much a management aspect in here I'm tempted to use the, the term survival because the devs haven't used that to explain the game uh, but yeah it's like survival management sort of stuff so while we're here on the um, on the the map screen here I, I love this this is not really hardcore but it's like doesn't hold your hand <laughs> So you may notice that there is no indication as to where your submarine is on the map, right? That you, there's, they don't show you at all. So the way you're expected to navigate is find landmarks and then head towards... All right, let, let me give you, give you an example here. Okay, so if you're in this area here and maybe the only landmark you can see, or maybe here, the only landmark you can see is City of Ice, way, way off in the distance. So you look at that and you go, okay, I know this is near where I want to go. Maybe you want to head over here. So I'll head towards City of Ice. Then you get to City of Ice and you go, okay, well, now I can see on my compass, uh, Stabkirk is over there. So that's the direction I want to go. You actually, it's actually, it makes me feel like a navigator. It's not like super difficult by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just this other little challenge that doesn't make navigation too easy and so it doesn't make it trivial and actually you know you enjoy that aspect of it so uh i'll get out of the menu here and pull up the compass this is how it works so you know you do get a north out north south east and west sort of sort of indication here and it shows you the landmarks that are close by right so currently i can you know i can sort of infer my position uh stavkirk is over there carl the slow is there i can see it right there so if I go back to the map, I'm probably right here, right? Knowing that I've just come from uh, Tonnersburg, right? It's it's pretty cool. It's just that little added detail that um, it just it feels, for lack of a better term, it feels more realistic. You know, you're not going to necessarily have in your old world steampunk esque instruments in this sub and a post apocalyptic future. You're not going to have a little dot saying, "Well, this is where we are on the map." <laughs> It's nice. It's a nice little addition. So the story is sort of post-apocalyptic. It's something to do with like the gods have punished humanity or something. And and we're all stuck under underwater and, and the surface is frozen over. So we actually can't get out of the water. So everyone's just trying to drill through the ice in the, in the top here. It's kind of cool. It's a little bit unique. Um, I need to find somewhere to replenish my oxygen and damn get some food because i'm running out of food so the management aspects of the game are sort of brutal hang on where am i no what <laughs> where am i i am not where i thought i was okay see see guys Thomasburg. that's where i need to go so i was actually there-ish okay <laughs> don't mind me so you you Move by just uh, tapping W and S, you know, to go forward and back. Very, very much like uh, Rebel Galaxy. Controls very similarly to Rebel Galaxy, except you can go up and down using E and Q. So that's pretty cool. All right, all right. So management aspects. I really, I need to get some oxygen and some food because otherwise I'm going to die right while I'm trying to show you the management aspe aspects of the game. So <laughs> there we go. We just run out of food. That's not a good place to be. Uh, vehicle guild is probably not what we want. Uh, what is this? Ah. So the dock, you just hit R. And hope you're not in a position where your rope tension is too great and then you end up coming off. There we go. Okay. Can we get some food? Yes, we can. It's probably gonna... Oh, man. It costs so much. <laughs> All right, I'll get 30 food and like blow my wad here. It's it's not easy, guys. Not by any stretch of the imagination. It's in, it's incredible. 
So combat isn't like super hard. I'll sh hopefully show you some combat towards uh, towards the end here. But uh, combat isn't necessarily a problem. And I'm at a point in the game where I'm sort of overpowered and I can take on anything that comes my way in terms of combat. Uh, it's just that difficulty spike, which I'll get to after this. Okay, so the management as aspects. I really actually enjoy this concept uh, almost more than anything else. It's It's got these four crew stations. And again, I don't know if there are more than this. There might be on the biggest subs. Uh, that difficulty spike has stopped me from playing. <laughs> right? I just can't progress. All right, so you've got your, your helm, your sonar, torpedo, and, and gunner. And each one has... Um, attributes that they favor. So there's endurance, intelligence, perception, and strength. The helm, for example, uh, if you put a crew member with strength, added strength in there, then the overdrive is going to be presumably faster or maybe it'll last longer. I'm not really sure on that. Um, and if they've got, you know, increased endurance, then general engine power is going to increase. So that's just how fast you go normally, which is kind of cool. So these are your sort of like main story guys. I'm pretty sure these are consistent across all playthroughs. There's no, you know, that's something that you might, you're looking at this, you might go, oh, this is something with a lot of replay value. It doesn't seem like it. Uh, it's all very linear. It's, it's a linear experience that gives you hints of like an open world. And it's, a, it's I've got to admit, that's a little bit disappointing, a little bit of a tease. But again, as long as you know that that's what you're getting into. So these are your sort of main characters and judging by the fact that uh, your gunner and your helmsman up here appear in the promotional art, I dare say they're, uh, you know, they're, they're consistent uh, across all playthroughs. So these, these, they don't change. They're always there. Once you pick them up, you know, you pick them up in um, helmsman, you start with him, then the sonar guy, then the gunner, and finally the torpedo man. And then you got like generic crew mem members and I got two of them here. Uh, and you put them basically wherever you want. If you leave them in what I'm calling the crew lounge, they will passively repair your ship. Uh, the reason they're there now is because of that goddamn boss that I can't beat. Um, I'm just having to repair all the time. Okay, so for example, if you put them in the helm, uh, no, I've already told you that. So hang on. What I'll do, what I'll do is I'll show you. Let me let me grab uh, Jack here. There you go. So now we're going to move 30% faster, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, let's let's just get let's get movement going. So we can also just like quick put them in there if we don't if we don't care who goes in there, just put someone in there. So our engine is seventy percent faster now, and our overdrive is maybe twenty percent faster. Is that how that works? I'm not one hundred percent sure. So I think the more crew members you have, the more oxygen you use, maybe, and the more food you consume. So I actually had a lot more crew members in this, but I was running out of oxygen so fast that it was like I couldn't do anything. So I, I, <laughs> I fired some of my crew and then we we're all right. But you run out of oxygen real quick. I really need to buy more tanks. They're just so, so expensive. It's absurd. So what we're looking at here, the orange fish is a fantastic idea in my opinion. So this, this directs you towards your quest goal. Now, normally you wouldn't see these all the time. Uh, that'd be a little bit obnoxious. It's just because it's like a, it's a big section, right? It's a big boss and it's clearly, it wants me to go there right away. <laughs> it's like, hey man, let's do it. Come on. Let's, <laughs> let's head towards the boss. Let's head towards your objective. But usually you only see these guys when you get near, near a landmark and you only see them for a short amount of time, maybe a hundred meters out from the landmark and then they disappear. So if you're out here, for example, you won't have any indication of the direction of your objective. But if you go, for example, like uh, go to Home of Ice, sorry, I mean Home of Ice, I'm thinking, <laughs> I got like X-Rebirth in my head or something. Uh, city of Ice, City of Ice, you hit the City of Ice and then, hey, orange fish, and you go in that direction and then they disappear and it's up to you to stay on course and navigate through obstacles and whatnot and, you know, still still head towards your goal. So if you end up losing your direction, well, then you've got to find a landmark again. It'll direct you to where you got to go. So they've actually done a really fantastic job of taking, honestly, an area that isn't that big and making it feel so much bigger by obscuring things. And, and uh, well, I mean, the, the fog sort of helps. Yeah. And it adds to the atmosphere for sure. But um, for example, Daybreak here is so deep down. I actually sailed over it like five or six times without, I was looking for it because I had to go there. Um, 
And I couldn't, I couldn't find it because I just did not expect for it to be right at the bottom. You've really got to rewire your brain here to think in three dimensions because a lot of the stuff is either up top or at the bottom and you don't necessarily expect it to be there. It's, it's pretty cool. So yeah, these guys show up as just sort of like a, an in-world explanation or, to, you know, to show you where you need to go. Uh, I kind of like it. Yeah, it is a little bit ham-fisted in your face, but I feel like it's a lot better than a UI element, element coming up and going, hey, this is where you need to go. Uh, similarly, you've got green fish that indicate an area where you can save the game, which is pretty cool. There they are up there. Okay, all right. So, the difficulty spike. Let's go look for some combat. It shouldn't be too hard to find. And let's talk about this difficulty. It's really annoying, man. Uh, the reason, the reason that I'm so distressed by this sudden diff difficulty spike is not that it's pre preventing me from progressing. That's fine. It's that the game doesn't tell you how it wants you to beat it. Um, normally when things get hard, you know, you try a few times, you get there. You can usually tell, all right, that's what I need to do. It's just, I'm not fast enough or whatever. Um, with this game, it's it's really difficult to tell whether you need to study the boss and like interpret its attacks or something, Dark Souls style, or if you need to grind some more and level up um, so, so that you're tougher, so you can take more hits and defeat the boss that way. It's really difficult to tell, and the game doesn't hit, hint one way or the other, which is very unfortunate. Now. The game is also a little bit contradictory. Oh shit, we've got... Okay, that one actually says pirate. There you go. We've got two hostiles here. Oh shit. Alright. <laughs> How are we going? There we go. One down. There we go. Two down. No, wait, what? No! There's a guy down there! That salty son of a bitch! Oh, he just torpedoed me! That piece of shit! Alright. We got him. Come on. Come on, maybe slow down a little bit. Try not to turn too much because our accuracy goes down that way. Oh shit. Dive, dive. <laughs> this is, no, this is, this is good to show you because this is an unfair fight for sure. Oh god, okay. This is absolutely an unfair fight and it might sort of refute the point I was going to make in a second. Hold on. Where's the guy up here? We've lost him now. So it can be a little bit tricky, especially when they sort of stop moving. It can be tricky to... to hit them. Oh, okay. Come on, baby. This guy can take a beating. There we go. There we go. One to go. Let's try and get away from... Yep. Alright, good, good. <whistles> Intense, man. Oh, shit. See, this is... This annoys me when they when they just stop moving. And you just start circling them and you can't catch up. Oh, shit. Oh, now I'm out of scrap! Okay. So that's a thing to remember. <laughs> you actually use scrap to, uh, to shoot. So I've got to get out of here. But as you can see, if I, it wasn't for the fact that I ran out of ammo, I could probably take those guys out. What was it, like four guys? I'm, I'm pretty good. Um, I don't want to say overpowered, but I can handle these guys, and which is why I have such an issue with, um, with this particular boss, is that the game is telling me that I am capable of taking on multiple pirates, which is they're the, the main hostiles in, in this part of the game, at least. Um, the game is telling me that, that I can take on multiple pirates at once and survive. Um, and then it hands my ass to me with this ridiculous boss. And again, I reiterate, look, it might just be that I'm bad, but the issue I have with it is that I don't know if it's because I'm bad <laughs> or I need to level up my ship or what. It's, it's really confusing. Um... And that's why I'm sort of stuck at this eight hour mark in this one area, can't progress. So really the only the only thing I the only thing I can do is just I guess just grind some more, just just sail around and 
look for some more shit and <laughs> hopefully I'll get there eventually. But that's uh, that's sort uh, of the crux of it there. Anyway, anyway, I'll, I'll leave it there. We've, uh, you know, I've, I've said probably all I had to say. I really uh, like the, the presentation of the game. It looks fantastic despite the fact that it's not high fidelity. I really like the soundtrack. Um, it sort of, it's grew on me a little bit. It, the sound in general, sound design in general, sort of reminds me a little bit of uh, Monster Hunter, oddly enough. You know, it's a little bit whimsical at times. Um, and I guess uh, jolly. <laughs> But then it hits you with these sort of, you know, deep sea, eerie imagery and that, that juxtaposition is kind of, it's kind of nice and a little bit jarring. It's very cool. So ultimately, would I recommend the game? Prior to this boss I can't beat, I would say absolutely 100% recommend the game out the wazoo. I love it. I think it's unique. I think it's, it's fan-fucking-tastic and I love that it's, it's releasing into a full version, no early access. <laughs> That's great. That's really cool. But uh, yeah, but then I got to this part that just stopped me from progressing. So I'm going to say, I'm going to stay on the fence on this one, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's an awkward situation where I can't really look at other reviews or contact other content creators and say, hey, have you been having with this, having trouble with this section as well? Because it's such a small game, there's like no hype. No one's talking about it, unfortunately. It deserves to be talked about, but no one's talking about it. So it's really difficult for me to tell if it's just me or if there is actually an issue with the difficulty in that particular section. So just keep that in mind. Be aware that it looks open world. It's not really. Um, did I talk about the aspect of the Metroidvania? So one of the really cool things that it does just quickly is the way it locks you off from, from content, I guess. So in order to progress, there's a certain section of the game where you've got to go deep down in this area uh, to the bottom of the, the ocean in order to progress. Now, instead of like locking you off with a door or some shit and you got to find a key like every other game does and it's really boring, the, the way it stops you is by making you explode. <laughs> Basically, your ship isn't powerful enough, isn't, isn't strong enough to handle the pressure of the deep depths, right? So you've got to upgrade your ship so that you can dive down. Now, it's the exact same principle. It's no different to, you know, upgrading something or finding a key or something to get through a door. They've just presented it in a way that makes total sense within the world and the context of the story and the setting. Um, and I and I love that. It's just the minor details here. It's the whole uh, setting and the, and, and the theme and the way it's all tied together with gameplay is really fantastic. Recommended. <laughs> But also watch out for the difficulty spike. So there you go, guys. There you go. I hope I helped someone with this video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Roleplay Gamer out.